In 2024, students are going to be given an equation sheet for their GCSE physics exams. In this video, I'm going to explain about some of the problems with this and what you can do to overcome them. Now I must say that I am a fan of equation sheets. These are routinely given to students doing A-level physics. They get a massive booklet like this full of equations. And also at university level and beyond, you will be given a lot of the equations. And I don't think GCSE should just be a memory test where you just recite facts that you've just learnt off by heart without actually understanding it. So what are the problems with the equation sheets this year? So the first problem is that lots of students aren't going to spend enough time actually trying to remember and really deeply understand what the equations mean. Now, if you know that they're on the sheet that you can refer to in the exam, you might think, well, there's no point trying to remember the equation for kinetic energy or gravitational potential energy. But if you're revising thoroughly, then as you're doing your revision and doing lots and lots of past papers, you should just start to learn what all of the equations are and actually what they mean. For example, if we're looking at the gravitational potential energy, we know that this is related to the mass of the object. It's related to the gravitational field strength and also that change in height. And that means you should be able to remember that the gravitational potential energy EP is equal to mg delta h. That's just something that you should know. You shouldn't need to go to a data sheet to actually look this up in the exam. Now, my approach would be, every time you get a question with a calculation, first of all, try and identify exactly what they're asking you to calculate. That's quite important. Then maybe have a look in the question, look for some numbers, look for some quantities. You could highlight these, you could underline it. When you know what you're trying to find out and what you've been given, you can then try and remember which is the most appropriate equation. Write down the equation, fill in your numbers or rearrange it, and then you should get the correct answer every single time. You shouldn't have to be going to your data book not knowing which equation might fit all of these quantities together. So the first problem is, is that by having a data sheet, some students think they don't actually need to learn these equations and actually practice applying them to new situations. So if you are aiming for the top grades, make sure that you know all of the equations off by heart and you can select and apply an appropriate equation every time you do a question. The second problem with these equation sheets is that many students don't know how to use them quickly. Now, I know I said that you should just remember all of the equations, you should understand what they all mean, but when you're writing it down, it's worth spending five to 10 seconds just double checking, and that means you need to know exactly where that equation is going to be in that equation sheet. Because it might be that you've just forgotten to put a term in, just as a silly mistake under the pressure of the exam, you might have forgotten a squared term, so it's always best to double check. Now. To actually find these equation sheets, they've all been published by the exam boards. Um, they're pretty much exactly the same as they were back in 2023. But you need to be familiar with the language that they're using, so how they've actually written down the equations, which symbols they're using for that equation, and also the order that they're laid out. Now, the order of the equations is as it comes in the specification, so you, everything is grouped by topic, but you need to be really familiar with it, so you can instantly go and check the right equation. Uh, you, this one here is a, an Edexcel International GCSE one over here. I've got uh, an OCR one here, uh, which tends to be um, printed out in the other way, which I don't find is useful to use, but whatever it is, you need to be familiar with it. You need to print out your own copy and refer to it all of the time. And that's the problem, is that if students aren't used to using the equation sheet they're going to get in the exam, they're going to spend lots of time, wasted time, trying to find and double check the equations when they should be going straight to them. So to overcome that second problem, make sure you download a copy today. And I've got links underneath this video that you can follow to find the equation sheets for your exam board. Now, the third problem about these equation sheets is that the decision to give them was made quite late when the exam papers had already been written. And what that means is that in the exam paper, there are going to be lots and lots of easy marks available that you'll be awarded just for writing down the equation. And everybody doing the exam can easily look in the equation sheet, copy down the equation and get the mark. Now that sounds good because you're going to get a higher percentage on the paper. But if everybody gets a higher mark because everybody's getting these easy marks, that means the grade boundaries are going to increase. So the problem I suppose it's not really a big problem, but the problem is because everybody has access to all of the equations, it means that everybody's marks on the exams are going to be a little bit higher. So what can you do to overcome that? Well, I would say, in addition to looking at lots of time doing the calculations and understanding that side of the physics, the thing that you've got to concentrate on is where you can get marks where other people won't get them. The thing that I know most students hate 
are the big six markers where you have to describe how to conduct some kind of practical experiment. Or maybe there are going to be lots of two and three mark questions across the whole paper where you have to explain something. And it's those three mark questions that people don't really like writing out the answers to where lots of people drop a mark here and there. So to overcome the problem that the equation, the, the, the questions or calculations are going to be easier, you've got to make sure that you can get lots of marks across the whole paper, especially on the written answers where the equation sheet doesn't really give you an advantage. So effectively, the way to overcome that problem is to just spend a bit more time revising, look at lots of uh, past papers and practice papers, and that will really help you as you actually approach difficult exam questions, and they're the ones that are gonna get you the highest marks possible. So in summary, the equation sheet is a good thing because it will help you get more marks on the paper, but it's gonna help other people get more marks as well. However, what you can do to overcome that is to make sure that you know all of the equations off the top of your head, and that means you can answer questions quickly. You can spend a few seconds checking with the equation sheet, and you'll know exactly where everything is actually laid out on that equation sheet, because you'll have looked at it many times in advance. And also, you need to make sure you concentrate on your longer wordy answers, because they're the ones that lots of other people are going to struggle with, and that's your key to exam success this summer. So, um, yeah, hopefully that will help you. If you want to find any more resources, uh, I've got stuff over at GCSE Physics Online. And I've also got this completely free 100-page revision guide, which is perfect for AQA students, which is probably what most of you watching this video are. So if you want to download that completely free revision guide, again, there's a link underneath this video. And yeah, I hope it all goes well over the coming months. Thank you.